Well, hello everyone, this is Brett Darian, and today we are going to be playing a game called Groove Rider Slot Car Thunder. This is the Xbox version. It also was released on the PlayStation 2 and the GameCube. Now this game is a slot car racing game. And if you're not too familiar with slot cars, there are toys that have, um, uh, there are little cars that have like a metal pin on the bottom of them. And that pin sits into a groove on the track. And that groove has electricity going through it, and that's... And the electricity goes through the pin up into the car, and that's what makes it move. So that's what a slot car track is. And I did play with a few slot car tracks when I was a kid. But there aren't a whole lot of video games involving slot cars, because... Well, the... I mean, the idea is pretty simple, I guess. And... Because there is no steering or anything like that, you're just driving along the groove in the track. So, so obviously you gotta add some video game flair to it to make it more fun to play, like hazards on the track and, and the ability to switch between grooves instantly, which of course you wouldn't be able to do that in real life, but in video game logic, you can. So anyway, this game has 20 unreal tracks in a fantasy penthouse apartment setting. So, like a home setting again, you got a few different environments you can race through, like uh, the living room, bedroom, uh, you know, various other, uh, other locations. And it's got a local multiplayer, up to four players, but no online or split screen, or no, um, uh, no system like rather. And... And it also supports custom soundtracks, in case you don't like the in-game music. So, so anyway, let's just um, jump into the game here and see how the gameplay is. So, first of all, uh, look at the options menu. We got uh, game settings, which are just uh, your pace car, if you want to be solid or ghost, or you can turn it off completely. Also, number of laps. Uh, this only affects, I think, the arcade mode, not the, um, uh, the championship mode. Uh, car alerts, I think this turns off any warnings or indications, um, for any kind of hazards on the track. We'll go into that a little bit later. Uh, sound controls, just, uh, uh, just your volume levels and your custom soundtrack. And there are a few different, uh, control... Uh, mappings you can choose from. You can't do custom mappings, but you can choose between these few different layouts here. I usually, I choose the C layout because that uses the left stick to switch lanes and the right stick to accelerate and decelerate and the, and the right trigger to use your weapon. And you can also press the X button to, to discard a weapon. But there's a few different other options if you choose. Um, and besides that, just you can save and load and view any kind of records or, or record times you may have set. Alright, so we'll go in single player, and you got a few different modes here. Your arcade mode is just your basic, just pick a track and race on it. it a championship is how you unlock tracks and other cars. And time trial is time trial, just, uh, just competing against the clock. And you also have a few custom and special tracks, which I don't have access to right now. You have to unlock them. Um, as you can see here, place first in the 9 volt, or in the 3 volt, or 6 volt. So we'll go with championship, because that's how you unlock stuff. So, so um, uh, when you first start the game, you'll just have access to the 3 volt setting, which is the slowest setting. And then... Uh, you can unlock the 6 volt speed, which is faster, and of course the 9 volt speed is the fastest. Um, uh, the thing here, though, is that each one of these uh, different classes also has their different tracks. So you can't, as far as I know, you can't race the tracks on the 3 volt in the 9 volt setting, for example. So, but anyway, we'll start off with the 3 volt, 
and here's your different classes of vehicles. And of course, uh, most of these are still locked because I just started playing the game a little bit ago. But you start off just the British classics, and you actually only get a choice between one car when you first start the game. But you do unlock pretty, you do unlock other cars uh, uh, pretty easily uh, throughout the game. Um, uh, but I think all the cars have the same stats, like, because uh, again, this game has no steering or anything like that, so the cars should all handle the same. And here we have two different locations for the, um, three-volt cup, just dining room and bedroom. The dining room is the easiest, so we'll start with that one. And each cup has, um, four tracks in it. So while racing, um, you can, depending on which controls uh, you have set, um, in my case it's the uh, right stick to accelerate and decelerate, and you can also switch grooves or tracks anytime. Because the thing about this game is that um, there are various hazards on the track that you'll have to avoid. As you can see here from these yellow and red arrows you see here on the screen, if you crash into one of those, well, you will crash, and it will set you back quite a ways. Um, uh, now, these first tracks here, they're pretty simple, and they're very short, so you'll be done with them pretty quickly. But some of the layer tracks are a little bit longer and more complex. And you also have power-ups here. This is a shield power-up, so you can uh, you can go through hazards or anything with no problem, which is very handy. But some of the power-ups I found to be kind of useless, um, uh, like this jump power-up. Um, it can be useful for maybe jumping over some hazards, but on the later tracks, it's not really helpful because it can just... Uh, more than often, it just like bounces you off the track, so it's best to just discard it. That's what happens when you use it. Uh, now, I will say that when you first start playing this game, you probably won't be very good at it. Um, uh, uh, there definitely is a learning curve, because, uh, because at first, when you first start playing the game, you really won't know what you're doing, and you won't know what to do. Um, but after you memorize the tracks, and when you um, when you get a uh, when you get a feel of the controls, uh, you will find yourself doing better. So don't get frustrated at first. Uh, well, you will get frustrated first, but you know don't let it you know don't let it get to you too much, uh, because you will get better with practice. So this is the second track here. And, and the environments, I mean, they do look nice, although there isn't a whole lot of time to really, to really admire them. Uh, you're really just focusing on the track. Uh, but there are some things going on in the background in some of the races. Uh, like this, uh, 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 like this track actually has some fire in the background. And these different colored lines you see on the different grooves, um, the green ones will give you a speed boost. And in the later tracks, you will see a red line that will slow you down. But the thing about the, um, uh, the slot car thunder, uh, well, the thing about these, uh, these slot car tracks is that they're exactly the same every time you race them. So you can memorize them and when you do that, you can actually do really well. But you have to... You have to really race them a few times to really get to that point. And your AI racers, they will make mistakes too. So that helps. Um, that will allow you to catch up. Um, but if you get way back there, like way back behind... Um, you may not have much time to catch up. Alright, now we're moving on to the third track.
And at first, before every race, you can do this fly through cam, um, but I usually just skip it. So one thing I've definitely learned about this game while playing it is that it doesn't always pay to go fast. Um, that, like, if you're always accelerating, uh, you will not do well. It does pay to slow down, and that gives you more time to react uh, to hazards on the track, to steer around them. And also, if you're going too fast around a turn, you can fly off the track. Which can sometimes be unfair, because there have been times when I felt like I was not going very fast, and it still kicked me off. So, that can definitely be frustrating. But, uh, but despite, uh, despite the uh, frustrations, I still have been having fun playing this game. It, it's definitely not a typical racing game. Uh, that does make it more unique, and it's still kind of fun to play, and, and it... And it does pay to learn this game. And and I found myself placing first place in tracks that, uh, that at first maybe I had trouble with. Um, but after playing them a few times and learning them, I got really good. And that does feel very rewarding. And you can also um, drive through these little... Um, uh, these little... Um, uh, you see these like green circles or red circles on the track that you can drive through and that can raise and lower some other hazards on the track now the uh, uh, the game will try to um, alert you to upcoming hazards on the track, like you see like a little arrow here next to my uh, car. That's trying to let me know that, hey, there's a, uh, there's a hazard on this particular groove that you're on, so you may want to steer. Uh, but sometimes they are hard to see, because the arrows are so small, and sometimes they're not accurate, I've found. So, so I found that it's a lot better to just rely on your own a, a memory of the track uh, like right there that's a pretty bad turn there I tend to get kicked off on that turn a lot um, so you got to go really slow around certain turns uh, but again I found it more reliable to just rely on your own uh, your own memory of the track and that's better to not really pay attention to the arrows they can help a little bit um, but I didn't find it very useful uh, like just learning the track itself uh, to me helps a lot better yeah see it happen again so this is this is where the frustration comes in sometimes the game can seem to be a little uh, uh, a little unfair and you know, the controls can be a little off. Or well, they can feel a little off. Um, but, you know, but still, despite that, I have been having a good time playing this game, and I think I will enjoy playing it in the future, despite the... <laughs> despite how frustrating that it can be sometimes. I'm not doing my best here either because you know, I'm trying to talk and race at the same time. And, you know, which, which, uh, yeah, which usually doesn't. Uh, we both went off together there, uh, which can also, you know, not really. Oh, there's a bottle there too. I forgot about that. So yeah. So some tracks do have a lot of hazards on them, and they can seem overwhelming at first. But again, once you memorize them and you concentrate on them. Um, you'll find yourself doing pretty well. Yeah. And well, I still got first place in that cup, so that's really good. 
All right. Um, I will show one more cup. We'll show one of the uh, six volt tracks. And so again, this is how you unlock. Uh, we'll do. Um, uh, we'll choose one of the '70s uh, cop car cars, which will be this one. And this would be the. Uh, this is the living room location. Uh, which these tracks are a little darker, so they're a little. Um, uh, it's a little hard to see. And the layer tracks also kind of split off, um, so you may have two, uh, uh, and they also have loop de loops as well. So this is one of the more advanced tracks. No. Yeah, sometimes it can be a little crazy when you go through all these. Um, uh, I think the game calls them booby traps. And when another car can set them off while you're right in front of them, and it can cause some havoc. And you can also bump other players off the track, and they can also bump you off. And sometimes that can be a little startling when it happens, but. So new hazards are introduced as well as you advance through the cups. Um, like, um, eventually you start getting the tracks that will have pieces of the track missing. And you'll just fall in them if you, uh, if you keep driving on that groove. So again, it definitely pays to memorize the tracks and where the hazards are. See, there's some of those red lines that will slow you down on the track. I'm not sure what that was, uh, where it'll just it'll just buzz and alarm you. At first, I thought that was another like hazard indication or a hazard warning, um, but it doesn't always seem to happen when there is a hazard imminent. So I'm not exactly sure what it is. You see, this track is pretty dark, but they are still very short, so. And there's not a whole lot of hazards on this track, so... And of course, depending on your display settings, it, you know, this track might be a little brighter. <laughs> there's not one of those turns where... If you're, if you're accelerating when you're making the turn, you'll just, you'll drive right off. So, so, like I said, even though this game does have some issues, I have been having a good time playing it. It, it does feel good when you, um, uh, when you master a track and you're winning all the time. And, it's, and, and this could probably make some pretty good multiplayer sessions as well. Uh, some of the issues I've noticed is that um, sometimes when you crash and you respawn on the track, Sometimes the game will respawn you right in front of the hazard that you just crashed on, so then you may end up crashing into it again. Or maybe if you like, um, like if you get hit 
on a, um, on a, like a loop-de-loop, -loop, and you respawn on the loop-de-loop, -loop, sometimes you might just keep falling off of it. And it might take a few times before the game realizes the problem, and then it resets you on another part of the track. So this game definitely could have used some other, you know, testing or some more optimization. But still, what you have here isn't bad. And I do think that this is a good fun game as long as you have patience and, uh, and you're willing to learn it. And the fact that it is a slot car thunder game is... It, it, it's a more simple kind of racing game. Uh, but it's also... In a way, it is also easier to play and easier to learn. <laughs> as long as you can avoid all the hazards. Yeah, there's also mines you can place as well. Um, your different power-ups include mines and speed boosts. And shields like this, like I mentioned before, you can pass through hazards with these. Uh, the uh, the shield is definitely the most powerful, uh, the most useful power up by far. Yeah, see, like in this instance, it seems like you never land properly on the track when you take that jump, and it just kicks you off. Nah. Definitely wouldn't help to use the uh, the boost boost power up in this track. So, the game may look really frustrating here, but I'm also not playing my best, because again, I'm trying to talk and play at the same time. Uh, but if you really concentrate, though, uh, this game can be fun. All right, well, we got one more uh, one more track to play here. Heck, <laughs> well, I've got no points at all in this cup. But... I don't think we've even done this track yet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Another issue I've ran into as well is that since this is a slot car track, um, you can't switch tracks if there's someone right next to you. So, and sometimes that means that, well, if there's a hazard right in front of you, then, <laughs> you know, then you're just going to, then you're just going to run into it, obviously, and you can't go anywhere. So, there are some downsides to a slot car track like this. Whoa. What happened there? Heck, it's kind of dark here. I can't really see very well. And I have some of my brightness settings turned up on my capture card, so... You know, but it's still pretty dark. So, the game may not usually appear this dark, it might just be my capture device making it look this dark. If you're playing this on actual TV, it may look brighter than this. See, so there's probably a hazard there, but I can't see it. Oh, 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 maybe I just didn't make the turn. Well, that always gets me. Oh, 
Well. I'll do better next time. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, that's been Groove Rider, Slot Car Thunder for the original Xbox. Uh, again, it's um, it's not a bad game. Uh, it just has a learning curve, and if you have patience and you're willing to learn the tracks, this can be a fun game to play. Uh, this game's probably about ten dollars on the Xbox. The GameCube version is the most expensive. Uh, for some reason, it might be uh, more of a rare copy or just got less of a print. But uh, thank you for watching, everyone, and uh, feel free to leave a comment. Let me know if you played this game and what you thought of it, and I will see you guys in my next video. So take care.